It's a bit sad when a company that's built its entire legacy and success on the backs of an internal combustion engine declares that, hey, we're going to be fully electric by 2040. Uh, we're going to have everything, you know, all of our cars, scooters, motorbikes. Hey, it's all going to be it's all going to be electric, either battery electric or fuel cell. Honda has just given me a glimmer of hope for their investment into the internal combustion engine. Check out what just happened. At EICMA, which is like the motorbike expo of the world, it's kind of like, I don't know what, what SEMA kind of is. I don't know, it's, it's the largest auto show for motorcycles in the world. Well, they have this new engine technology that doesn't, like it's never been done before on so many different levels. So my mind is a bit blown here. And don't, before you click off and say, Kirk, this is just for motorcycles. No, 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 no. Not so fast. This sort of technology could very well be translated into their automobiles too. So don't give up on that quite yet. And I'm not giving up on Honda. I don't believe they're going to be fully battery electric by 2040. I think that's where they set the bar. And I think things are going to change with the worldwide situation where internal combustion is going to reign uh, supreme for a very, very long time, or at least have a place in the market for a very, very long time. And what we have with this engine and the technology in it, I mean, I haven't been this excited for an engine. Oh man, at least from the Japanese automakers, I can't even tell you the last time. Uh, maybe, maybe the three cylinder engine from Toyota, the turbo that's in the GR Corolla, maybe that was the last time I was this excited. But to be honest, I might actually be more excited about this. You guys know I got back into motorcycling at the beginning of this year, 2024. I got a little Honda Grom, love that thing. Had an MT-09, didn't like it. Got a ZX4RR Kawasaki inline four high red line screaming, fun, fun enthusiast motorcycle. So I still have a press bike from Honda. It's called the SCL 500. It's kind of a scrambler style motorcycle. It's fun, it's fine, it's pretty, it's just like the most predictable motorcycle ever, even more predictable than my Grom. My heartstrings get more excited when I ride a motorcycle than I do when I drive a car. I like both, but if I just want to have fun, just about any motorcycle, not only are they fast, but they're just more exhilarating, more engaging to drive than any sort of automobile. And so let's get into this engine. I could be around the bush all day. This is the world's first V3 motorcycle. Now, you guys are funny in the comments. You know, some of you will talk about cars and their four cylinders and call them V4s. Well, there are no, but not that I know of, there are like no V4s in automobiles. There are V4s in motorcycles and they're V twins in motorcycles. You look at a Harley that's a V twin, two cylinders, you know, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Excuse me for the sound effect. V engines. Honda's no no uh, no stranger to, right? The VFR um, V4s and people swear by these engines. They're some of the best sounding engines ever made that have tons of character. Um, if we look at Ducati, they have V4s. The Italians make V4 engines still. Um, Yamaha, well, we'll get to this page. Yamaha um, is going to V4s uh, because their inline four doesn't seem to be as competitive um, with the V4s that the Italians have. Um, so that's going to be happening, happening in the, the year there are one, um, a V4 coming in and replacing what's always been an inline four for Yamaha. So what the heck is this V3? A quick Google search from V3. I've never heard of one before. Look how short this page is, right? The V3 engine is a V style engine. So you have two cylinders on the front bank, one on the rear bank in this situation. It's a rear configuration. It's been mostly used in two stroke engines for motorcycles competing in Grand Prix motorcycle racing. Racing. The first example was a 1955 DKW 350. Suzuki made one uh, to compete in the 1968 season. However, rule changing mandated single, singer, single cylinder engines meant that the 50cc V3 engine was never raced for Suzuki. Honda revived the layout from 1982 to 1984, just three years for Grand Prix racing motorcycles. And the MVX 250F, as well as the NSR 400R sport bikes, had used V3 engines. In November 2024, Honda showed a prototype of a newly developed V3 engine paired to an electric 
supercharger. So you can count on one hand how many times V3s have been used and the history of internal combustion. Not only do we have a V3 here from Honda, this is going to be coming into production motorcycles and it's going to be using electric turbocharger. And we'll get into the benefits of an electric turbocharger here in a second. But this water-cooled 75 degree V3 engine is being newly developed for larger displacement motorcycles. They don't give us a displacement here. Um, if I had to guess, it would be 750 cc's. You have 500 cc's, so you have 250 cc's per cylinder. That's just my guess. Now, it could be super strange where the the cylinder, um, the front cylinders could be a different size than even the rear cylinder. I, I highly doubt it. That just doesn't compute in my head, but we're, we're talking about some freaky stuff here. Um, it's been designed to be extremely slim and compact. It features the world's first electrical compressor, turbocharger, for motorcycles, which is able to control compression of the intake air irrespective of engine RPM. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Uh, meaning that high response torque can be delivered even from low RPM. No such thing as turbo lag on an electric compressor here. In addition, the electrical compressor allows a high degree of freedom of layout of all the components in the limited space available on a motorcycle and efficient centralization of mass. It also does not require any form of intercooler. Honda sees the development of its V3 engine with an electrical compressor is a new challenge in the area of internal combustion engines. And its goal is to enable customers to further experience the joy of riding and owning a motorcycle. Honda plans to apply the new V3 engine to larger displacement models in the future and will continue its development towards mass production. So if we look at something that's used in the automotive industry like Garrett's E-Turbo, is it the, is Honda using just their own e turbo that they've they've designed themselves? And absolutely not. What's going on with an e turbo is that it's assisted with an electric motor to redu reduce turbo lag, but it still runs off of the exhaust. Turbos are connected to the exhaust manifold. And what we see with Honda's design, there's no turbo hanging down here on the exhaust manifold. And, and it would be weird if it was because we have this V engine where one of the exhaust uh, manifolds is on the other side or the downpipe, you could say. It's all the way up here and there's no exhaust running to it. Okay, it, that's why it doesn't need an intercooler. It doesn't have ex hot ass exhaust flying through this. Um, and that's why they can make it very minimal. They have to have electric power running into this. It's electric. If we look at uh, Garrett's turbocharger, the E-Turbo, which is um, you know powered off of electricity as well as exhaust gas, it has to have a battery connected to it, right? You have to. You have to have electric power running to this E-Turbo. Does that mean Honda is going to have a hybrid with this setup. It's possible, I guess. I mean, maybe it's a 48 volt mild hybrid sort of thing. Maybe they can make do with a 12 volt battery. Maybe they can use a solid state battery. I'm not quite sure how they're going to get enough juice to power this electric supercharger, but, or should I say turbocharger, they call it a compressor because technically it's not a turbo. Turbo is run off the exhaust. So it's going to be so much fun to see the additional technology um, to, to make this thing run properly. When we look at the automotive end, Honda already has hybrids, uh, naturally aspirated hybrids. Just, but just think of the power they could get out of their engines. And they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't need, here's the thing, they wouldn't need crazy amounts of engine power. You got to think what's happening right now with automobiles is that we're having a downsizing of engines, which was going on here. Instead of an inline four, we have a V3 here, but because of the turbo, we get more power, right? But that we could see this sort of technology put in a Honda hybrid range extender. So you, it's mainly electrical driven. And then you have this little force induced uh, with minimal plumbing, minimal um, components around this engine. I'm not saying it's, it would be a V3. It'd probably just be a parallel twin as a range extender, but turbocharged, e-turbocharged in a Honda uh, range extender hybrid. 
Could they use this on their next gen hybrids coming in 2026? This sort of e turbo technology? Yeah, they could. In fact, we need some sort of hybrid from Honda on their large platform. And they could hybridize their two liter turbo that we see in, well, what we used to see in the Accord, we see in the TLX, we see it in the RDX, and we see it um, higher boosted versions and tuned versions in the Type S and the Type R models. But I could absolutely see some sort of e-turbo happening for Honda's automobiles and their hybrids, which gets me very, very excited just on the possibilities of this technology. If Honda doesn't share this technology with the automotive end, it's a waste or it's a wasted opportunity. People don't want to give up their Honda engines and go straight to, to EVs, all right? Honda's hybrids are quite good but they can be a better, they, they struggle in some areas. So I'm excited for this. And I sure, let me know if you guys would like to see this technology flow into their automobiles in some way, shape or form, man, it sounds really, really exciting. Um, it's a cool looking engine too. Of course, the, the red covers look amazing on, on the, the engine as well as the turbo here to act, you know, to accentuate what's so unique about it, but the pipes and how they like, Look how the pipes flow around. I feel like Honda's doing a lot of artsiness here too. I mean, yeah, I feel like the, the back cylinders um, exhaust probably could just flow the other way where these finish. But look, they snake it around to make it more cool looking, more aesthetically pleasing the triple pipes. I mean, I am, I'm a kid in a candy store with this. This is coming. And since I love motorcycles, I'm going to be able to enjoy it. I mean, I'd pop, put money down on, on one right now if Honda's like, hey, it's coming in this motorcycle, you know, get your hands on it. Like, to me, it gets me just, my, gets my blood flowing. Sounds super cool, super powerful, very efficient, very unique. I can't imagine what it V3. There you go. The inline three is already freaky sounding itself. It wasn't my favorite sound. That's one of the reasons I got rid of the MT-09. But a V3? I can't, like my head's just hurting trying to think about the sound of this. I already, I know the, what the V4s sound like. This thing's going to sound pretty darn cool. I'll see you guys in the comments. I'm not going to talk about their electric motorcycles coming to them, electric scooters coming. They're pretty cool though. And it's pretty, they could be actually four, uh, not four wheel drive, two wheel drive. Hey, all wheel drive on a motorcycle sounds pretty rad to me. And it would make sense, you know with all that instant power and torque to have it um, be split against, uh, you know, the traction split with the two wheels, which is pretty neat, but belt driven too here on this scooter and belt driven here on that motorcycle. I can make a video just on those guys, but electric motorcycles and scooters don't get me nearly excited, as excited as this Frankenstein um, turbo, e turbocharged V3 from Honda. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you're half as excited as I am. I think, well, single sided swing arms always look good. So hopefully they can bake that into whatever V3 engine uh, motorcycle this comes in. But anyways, got to cut myself off. I hope this is not far away. I hope we're only two to three years out, but hey, it looks like Honda's got something really special on their hands. Thank you guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.